Hi everybody, um, I've been buying quite a few pieces of test equipment off of eBay lately and um, one thing that caught my eye was a voltage current source, uh, a Mastec 7221 on eBay and I thought it was quite cheap at uh, £45 so I went ahead and bought it. To tell you the truth, when the package arrived I thought, what on earth is this? I had no idea. I mean, whatever it is, it looks brand new, or the case does anyway. So, opened it up. Wow. Mastec 7221 voltage milliamp calibrator, it's called. It's just a, a multimeter with a built in voltage and current source uh, capability. It's brand new. This has not been used. Um, bought it for £45 and. Uh, they're available on uh, Amazon at the moment, £240, so I uh, thought, wow, wonder if it's faulty or if something wrong with it. I mean, the leads still look brand new, they're still in their original uh, little tag here, so let's take a look at it. Okay, I was playing about with the uh, 7221 there in voltage mode, and I was just a way to try it out in current mode. Um, <coughs> When it did something odd, it just shut down. So, um, let me show you what happens. Uh, if I just press the on button, it's switching off almost immediately. And it wasn't doing that before. Something very odd there. So the first thing I thought was, well, the battery. So I put in a brand new battery, PP3, and it's doing the same. A little bit odd. It's almost like the battery's been detected as flat, and it's, you know, it's auto powering off. So I'll need to investigate that. Okay, so what I've done here is I've got my fluke hooked up across the battery terminals in the back with the battery still installed, and I want to see what happens. Monitor the voltage of the battery when I power up. Let's have a look. You can see it does dip down. Um, you know, that that can be normal, but um, I'm not convinced there. Okay, so what I've done now is I've hooked up uh, the 7221 to an external power supply. No battery, just the crock clips straight across the battery terminals in the back. And let's have a look and see what happens now. Powering up. Off. And on again. And at nine and a half volts, I'm drawing about uh, 30 milliamps there when it's on, according to the. No. And zero when it's off. Not the most accurate, but uh, obviously with a big power supply like that, it's able to handle any. A kick that the 7221 might generate that's triggering the uh, auto power down. So at first glance it would look like there's a problem with the um, power supply circuit inside the 7221. Okay. Um, Looks like this is a power supply circuit around here, so I think I'll um, do a little bit of an investigation, uh, see if I can't get a circuit diagram, or at least look at uh, one or two of the ICs data sheets and see see what we can find there. Okay, I've got the seven two two one hooked up uh, to the battery again, and up to the fluke so that I can monitor some voltages on the board. Uh, one thing I noticed that if you, like I said, if you if, if you press the power on it just um, goes off immediately. 
if you hold the power button in, you've got some sort of self-test mode uh, where it's illuminated every digit on the LCD. Um, so if, by holding in that push power on button, I can monitor voltages on the circuit itself. The battery uh, terminals feed up to a max 667 uh, 5 volt regulator IC. So let's take a look at some of the voltages on it. So pin 8 is the incoming supply. 9.24 volts and the outgoing is on pin 2 which is there 4.89 mm, maybe slightly low uh, but uh, I'll assume that's ok at the moment ok what I notice next is that the Mac 667 does have a shutdown mode um, uh, pin 5 on the 667 if you tie it low uh, then it enables the output if you tie it to anything above 1.5 volts according to the data sheet it shuts down the uh, output so let's quickly put the meter on the shutdown pin which is pin 5 Okay, at the moment, uh, the meter, it, it's off at the moment, and pin 5 is showing, it's in, well, this uh, battery voltage is basically in uh, shutdown mode, so if I push the power button and hold it in, you can see it's going down to more or less 0 volts, and that's enabling the output of the regulator and if I release the push button you can see you got a kick there and it seems to go back up again as it goes into shutdown mode I could probably scope it to uh, um, try and see exactly what's going on but I think what we'll do first is try and trace the circuit and see where that pin 5's uh, coming from Um, something a little bit peculiar here now. Um, I started tracing out the power supply circuit here. We've got a max uh, 667 5 volt regulator circuit with shutdown capability. We've got a, a 4013 flip flop tied into it and an LM317. And I was just a way to start uh, tracing the circuit there to see what I could come up, could come up with. And I noticed, I thought, well, before I do that, I'll hook back up to the power supply bench power supply and uh, see if I can simulate the condition where it won't power up properly uh, with the PP3 battery. So uh, let me wind the power supply so it's short at the moment up to nine and a half volts and I can power up no problem and power off no problem. So I thought well okay so let's if I wind the power supply down to maybe um, 8 volts, something like that. I'm figuring it's not going to power up, so let me go down to 8 volts on a bench power supply. Push the button, and it does power up. So I thought well, that's a little bit odd. It's almost like um, the 7221's taking a big kick on the incoming supply uh, to uh, pull, the, pull the, the, the voltage down. So let me, while it's powered up, let me wind the power supply voltage down and you can see, hopefully, there's the low battery indicator working at round about uh, 6 volts. So that's working nicely. Yeah, dead on 6 volts there, the low battery indicator comes on. So I thought, right, I'll leave it at maybe just below 6 volts where I've got the low battery indicator. I'll turn it off and see if it will power on again. And it still powers up even with a, a 5.6 volt uh, power supply. Okay, a little bit further on here. Uh, put the capacitors across the supply and it did seem to make a difference. However, when I ran the 
calibrator in um, milliamp output mode and ramped it up to um, full 20 milliamp output, it shut off again. So the capacitors across the supply helped, but I think just masked the real problem. So back to the board again. Basically, what you've got here is the Max 667 um, 5 volt regulator with a built in uh, shutdown and um, battery detection mode and all that. Uh, the on off switch, which is on the front of the unit, is uh, one of those soft switches and it's interfaced to a D type flip flop here, a 4013. Um, basically just to latch the uh, momentary action of the push button itself and looking at the hookup of it, pins 1 and pin 2 are as per normal, you got Q and Q bar Q is the signal that's used to interface to the 667 to do the latching Q bar doesn't appear to be used at all um, I'm going to lift the plastic cover off the other side to have a look but uh, Q bar is not used, it's just a complement of Q really um, but Q bar is not used but if I scope Q bar it stops the on off uh, switch from functioning but I can scope Q ok so there's something weird happening with with, uh, with the Q bar output um, I don't think it's used, but I'll have to take off the plastic cover, have another a, a bit more of a detailed look in case there's any through hole uh, underneath the IC uh, that actually interfaced it, but I can't see any traces coming off of the uh, pin 2. Um, scoping pin 2 should have no effect whatsoever on uh, the operation of pin 1, Q, so unless it's, unless it's a faulty chip. Okay, that's the uh, flip flop removed and uh, pin 2 there, if you can just about see it. It's got no trace coming off of it, so I don't have a surface mount uh, 4013 to put in there, so I'm just going to hack on uh, traditional DIL one and see what happens. Okay. Here's what is commonly known as a dead cockroach, and uh, let's see if it actually works. Oh. Oh, yes, it powers up and it powers off again. So let's see. I won't bother scoping pin to the flip flop. I'll just see if it can handle. Um, the full output so here's my multimeter and so I'll turn it on um, I've got it set up for uh, milliamp output mode and I've got the meter hooked up so let's up the current so it's 3 milliamps and the meter is responding accordingly so what was happening before is if I go above certain uh, output it turned itself off so there's 24 milliamps uh, sometimes it uh, would go off at 50 milliamps sometimes it would go up to 24 but then would power down of its own accord maybe just a few seconds after I would set the output to full load effectively and so far it's looking good I'm trying to go down 20 milliamps 21 sorry 20 if you hold your finger on the button um, it will ramp the, uh, the display up but don't actually change the output until you release your finger actually a little bit handy yeah, so it's 21. That's looking very good. And I don't have any of the capacitors on the back across the supply. So it's. Although I am powering it from my uh, bench 
power supply at the moment. But I'll try it with the battery next. We'll ramp up to 24, but even with the bench power supply it was failing as well. Just not as quick. That is looking good. It is looking good. Okay, I'm holding the battery in position manually at the moment because I don't have the case to hold it. Well, let's see what happens. So I'll turn it on. And I'll ramp the output right up to 24 milliamps. That's looking good. That's looking good. Um, try milliamp percentage mode. Milliamp percentage mode, for those that don't know, um, basically minus 25% is a zero milliamp output because it's designed around a 4 to 20 milliamp range. So minus 25 will give you zero milliamps. Um, so if I ramp it up to zero, sorry, that's your four milliamps and your 50 percent oh, too far is your 12 milliamps halfway between 4 and 20 and 100 percent should give me 20 milliamps yeah and you can obviously go above up to 125 I think it was give you 24 milliamps so I would say that's fixed okay so the question is now do I go and order a, a new um, Photo one three, or see if there's space in the case to leave this in situ. The only thing I've still got to do is the. It's a dual package, so the only thing I've got to do is tie the unused inputs on the second flip flop down to ground. It's not so good to leave them floating. I think I'll leave it in situ. Okay, here's the seven two two one back together again. Give a little test. Uh, milliamp mode again. I've got my multimeter hooked up to load it up as well. All other modes are working fine. I've already tested them. But this is the mode that loads up the most and it seems to be working. And yes, I did leave the cockroach in. Thanks for watching. Bye.